Thank you so much for coming to the uh, Out of Time Spiritual Healing Seminar class. Um, really great that you're here, that you made it, that you could carve out some time out of your busy schedule and uh, just to, to be here, to, to relax and to uh, say, yeah, receive some inspiration uh, in the awakening process that you find yourself in. So today, uh, the first class of this out of time um, spiritual healing class and that's always kind of new then we have to f find our way into it uh, together so i prepared some uh, ingredients so to speak uh, so one of one of them is an is a meditation and we're used to doing meditations but then there's always like um, somebody's like for instance me is sharing the words then there's quiet and then they're sharing the words etc and this time it will be a little different uh, so there will be music and words that you will see you have to read so that's different in the in the meditation so it really becomes a contemplation more than anything but i i love to do that so what am i using what is this out of time idea how did that start it and out of time has everything to do with not time you know not time so time is a construct a human construct so to be out of time is to be for a moment out of the human concepts and to to stay out of that so this class is is then say um, a real possibility to to take a look at, um, wait, there's somebody who can't hear me. Oh, you can't hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes? Okay, so, Julie, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I don't know what's going on. You may, might want to log in again. Anyway, so I'm going to continue. And um, the, th the thing is, this out of time class is really for you to enter into the place or to to open up your consciousness for a different experience of yourself something that has nothing to do with time and now that is easier said than done because we know that such thing exists and it doesn't mean that you directly enter into it whenever you want so there is something there that is um, there's something there that we might want to take a look at to uh, um, say to to come to a different yeah, understanding or undoing of what we're thinking like if you don't know what the obstacle is uh, you might just hang in there and take that with you wherever you go and still be um, yeah not having experiences of being out of time so this is a very short way of saying uh, what we're doing here and so i i'm not using specifically um, joel or using specifically this or that or course in miracles or bible no i'm i'm using really like coming from my own experience with spiritual healing coming from my own experience inviting you to to get deeply in touch with your own experience not based on the past, but uh, really about being present right here, right now. So this is something like it's it's an continuously an opening. It's an invitation to open more, open more, and relax deeply into yourself. And um, whatever is going to be helpful for that is is literally inspiring us to receive that. So that's why being in this class is a is in a certain sense a commitment because you're you have to be present here so so it's like okay forget about your phone forget about your telephone forget about your house your country for, forget about all of it um, in this uh, hour and a half that we're together because your presence determines how successful how beautiful this class is like you are absolutely important in um, being here literally not allowing your mind to wander away into 
ignorance, in fact, most of the time, um, and and being yeah sidetracked. So this is that is why it's really important to be present here and however you do that. So some of us can concentrate easily by or focusing inwardly easily with closing their eyes. But if you sit here for one and a half hour with your eyes closed, it will be perfectly all right for me. If you feel like you have to move for it because of your bodily um, yeah, experience of yourself, do it. Um, so it's like this is your own healing center. This is your own spiritual healing session. And you are the one who who is receiving this. And in that receiving, you give it away to everyone that's here and way beyond that. So that's why I say like your presence, your real presence here is really essential. Just like mine is too. It's like it's essential for me to be completely here. And com being completely here also part of that is to let go of the past, let go of what you think you cannot do, let go of your, what you think you yeah, didn't work out, or what your concerns are at this point. Like all this needs to go out of the way in order for you to have an expanded uh, experience of yourself. And everything, every ingredient that I say share here um, is inspired to be uh, a part of that, a support for that. And, and so I don't know what is exactly coming in that. So I will ask questions, I will do this and do that. Who knows what is going to happen, but the essence of it is this is all being shared with you for the undoing of yourself in terms of getting everything out of the way to have an open mind to to become totally open and receptive totally defenseless and uh, and all that so that is yeah that's yeah you can say the drill i love to use that word for now i don't know why but uh, it's like that's the practice of spiritual healing in the first place now here's the thing um to to enter deeply into this quiet place it can help to to uh yeah share this in a moment of quiet and and in a moment of maybe just music and words so what i'm going to share with you in a moment is uh, the say introductory meditation contemplation where i use the words from jesus um, as coming from say i am divine from john uh, i am divine i i made a visual of that in combination with some music and uh, it takes about six minutes and this we use just as a prayer as a contemplative praying moment to to help you to go deeper deep inside yourself um, so that's what i'm going to pull up Thank you. 
Be quiet for a moment.
All right. So there was our <laughs> moment of quiet, our quiet time. And uh, so to refer back to the to the words that we use, they are the words it's like the words from Jesus. That like all this is coming from out of time. It's like this is your help coming from out of time. Like these words that are spoken. You can even say like even the words of Joel are coming out of time. Like that what really is inspiring you is from out of time. Coming into your say human frame of reference. And, and that is an interesting idea uh, to stand still for a moment in that place. It's like, look at what is actually occurring in this spiritual class or in this moment or in the moments that you listen to a tape or are reading spiritual scripture. It's like you're actually directly connecting out of time for information, for inspiration that there will be, n it will never be found in this world. Uh, in the world that you, uh, say, perceive. So that you're in contact, in other words, you're in contact with out of time, with that, what is beyond time and space. So that's how, uh, say, common it is. But don't try to have any ideas within your conceptual frame about it or you limit it to to your uh, yeah conceptual idea about yourself and that is not what it is so when when we read words from jesus and saying like as i have loved you is it doesn't make sense to try to translate it into examples of how jesus has loved us or how jesus is loving us it's like that if you would try to fit that into your limited frame of reference, it would lose all its meaning. So and this, this is good to know. So in, in other words, whatever is shared here has a very specific purpose. It is never exactly what it, what it is referring to. Like it, it, the words are removed from truth. So I use them just to connect with you as long as that is necessary. We use words, but you, uh, words are like twice removed from the, from the truth. And this is good to know too. So it's like, when I'm talking about an experience, that is not what the experience is. If Joel is talking about the click, that is not what you think the click is. So you can wait for it for a long time, but that will never happen to you. So these, these things can help to, to move on in your spiritual awakening. Whatever you encounter, whatever you receive as, as spiritual inspiration has nothing to do with your ideas about it. In fact, connecting your ideas about it to it would lose it from what it was. Like it, it would just evaporate, in fact, as an experience of yourself. And um, so that's good to know. That's how I use words too. So it's like in this class, I will use words to connect with you and to express something, but that will never directly be what it is. So I, I made that point. <laughs> but that's really essential. This is, of course, the same when you read or when you listen to Joel or any kind of spiritual inspiration, doing a, the daily lessons of A Course in Miracles. It is referring to something. It is not what it is on paper, so to speak. So never take it in that sense, never take it literally, but let it inspire you, let it tell you what it means. That makes sense. So that's the same here. So. Uh, interesting parts then, uh, questions that come up, that arise uh, in becoming completely open and receptive to spiritual healing. One of the first uh, first things that occur is, is the fact that you think that um, you need to do something for it or that you have to uh, study for it or that you have to uh, conform to certain practices in order to receive it. And if you, if you think that, then that will it be for you. So 
So that's the same as um, uh, when Joel, for instance, uses the word nature of error. Like you have to understand the nature of error. This is something that we are going to take a look at uh, uh, in a certain sense because it's it's an essential part in the awakening to know that. Like what is the nature of error? But you see that whatever he is referring to, for instance, um, has not directly to do with what you think it is. So it's like it always appears as, and this is an essential thing, it appears as something. Error is never the thing, the person or the situation, but it, it appears as that. So this is very fundamental uh, spiritual healing yeah, theory or practice, if you want, to, to be aware of that. So that means that, okay, I see, for instance, a sick body. Is that a sick body? Is that like my confirmation that I'm perceiving error? No, it is the confirmation that something is appearing as an error. So that gives you the freedom to, to make it real, for one thing, or not. And in spiritual healing, we don't make that real. We say, from, no, that cannot be it. It appears that way. But now we already know more about that. We, we know how to deal with this in the sense of we're not going to confirm it. So that takes you out of the, the bondage of space and time. So that basically takes you out of time. It, it dislodges from time. See how, how familiar that is to you? So this is just to, to mention that. And um, so, uh, yeah, another part, of course, that is always coming up in, in spiritual teaching is the idea of illumination. It's like, what is that, illumination? Am I illumined? Is my mind illumined? Is, and, and yeah, Joel gives us some questions for that too. It's like, if this and this and this, you're just completely tied into the human frame of reference. You're not uh, an illumined mind or whatever it is. So you can self-check it. But I, I don't want to do too much of an analysis here. Um, so, but, but these themes will come up uh, in this class too, because you, you have to deal with it. Like, where is this leading to? What is, what is, you know, we know these ingre yeah, ingredients, I call them subjects. We know these subjects that are related to spiritual teaching, but what is it exactly and how do you do that? How would you arrive there or when can you say to yourself recognize in yourself this is the case this i can trust this is guidance or this is the voice of ego or whatever that is you know so the fine tuning for that is really something that we um, we have to we have to take a look at you know in order to come to the pure receiving of the spiritual healing practice and when I say spiritual healing practice, uh, is, what I mean is to come to a spiritual experience yourself. Because that's also um, what we are referring to. So another essential part uh, that I actually want to start with is the idea, what is your starting point? Where do you find yourself? And I set it up as an say as an as kind of an assignment for the participants here, like an assignment that I sent you in an email, like how, do, where do you find yourself? Can you give us a reflection of that? Can you give us an example of that, how that is looking right now? And um, we're going to take a look at that later. But uh, the essence of uh, what I'm actually asking of you to take a look at is, is then this, it's like, um, it is essential that you know where you find yourself. Not that you have to do a lot of analysis for it, but it's more like you you can come to an admission, like you uh, can say to yourself, well, this and this and this is occurring in my life. And um, I'm still very much like concerned with these themes in my life. And I don't really know how to deal with it. It's like 
that's that's good to do, to be open and honest about um, to discover for yourself where do I find myself in this spiritual awakening not that your evaluation is so important but just as a starting point for yourself it's like what happens for instance what happens when I meditate what happens what is actually the occurrence what am I experiencing when I close my eyes and when I do this a couple of times a day or when I read scripture am I aware that I say opening myself that I'm opening myself for light experiences for for direct communication for feeling presence for entering completely into this present moment so and how is that going how far do I dare to go in there so to speak like am I am I willing to to let myself be overwhelmed with the love of God and <clears throat> to take a look at it as an analytic part of, of your uh, spiritual healing practice is temporarily useful um, not that we keep doing that in order to dissect exactly where we find ourselves but just to to be aware of how you look at it yourself because how you look at it yourself can also be an obstacle to to open up even further to make that like well this never works that never works well, well, well. like your your negative idea about yourself could be a block to the yeah, awareness that it is available to you no matter what you don't it is not up to you to um, yeah you can only do so much in that sense it's like you can be open and then you wait and then whatever happens that is it and that's perfectly all right there's nothing wrong with that it's not that you have to be in another place that you then you find yourself so these are just some things to start with and but very essential in your spiritual healing practice of for yourself so and then <coughs> another part since we're looking at ourselves like another part is of course the idea that you are um, the main character here it's like no of course your experience is really important your experience is really important but don't forget that whatever you are perceiving is a temporal reflection is not a fact so it's a temporal reflection of what is um, what you are thinking in fact it's n not anything else than that it's like what Joel says in the nature of error it's a, an appearance as like my life looks like this or <coughs> I'm I see that my existence looks like this and um, this is another part to deal with in your spiritual awakening that's for one thing and that is um, so how do you place that whole layer of self-concept or self-idea uh, how do you place that in your uh, experience of yourself like what place does that have is in fact what I'm asking like what place does that have like do you see that as um, an, an essential part where you are going to prove that your spiritual uh, idea about yourself is right so what do I exactly mean with that so the one thing I mean with that is the fact that you see things about yourself and in your life what you call your life or your existence um, the things that you see are actually uh, not facts they're temporary reflections like it's a temporary thing that can change in an instant you you have another idea about yourself it will already look different or you've accepted a part of yourself and suddenly that is not a problem anymore these kind of things so that is uh, good to know too it's like but how much do you let this layer of self-concept determine um, where you think you find yourself in your spiritual awakening like do you see that 
the um, reflections that you get are um, actually showing you uh, nothing really like as a spiritual development but, but more like a total drama or or who knows what you experience and are you using that to in fact judge yourself about where you find yourself like well that didn't work out that didn't work out no, I'm really not doing not good at this at all maybe I'm not trusting God at all like all these things that you can think about this existence you can use against yourself to attack yourself in fact to to continue the war against yourself and thinking that that is a necessary part of your spiritual awakening to conquer that that would be the same as locking yourself up in a monastery and thinking that that is an actual support to your spiritual awakening or thinking that any kind of decision that you hold about it will improve it see as long as you hold ideas like that about this layer of consciousness the superficial layer of the human existence as long as you use that against yourself um, or as an as yourself like identified with it as yourself then uh, that will be it for you like then you will have that experience for you why am I saying this I make it it's it sounds like I make it complicated to express to you the opportunities that are right in front of you like that is the thing that I'm actually getting to it's like the opportunities here are limitless are not bound by your ideas about yourself if you don't let them so there's a real key for you in that and and I see this um, yeah it's, it is like a burden if you don't do that a burden for yourself so I see this a lot happening in uh, the moments that I meet with uh, someone like that always appears to be like an important part of the in fact of the ignorance to re just receive it and be open for the direct communication that's available for everyone without a sacrifice or price and and um, I know that the parts of sacrifice or price are um, yeah a hot item in a sense in a hot item um, so it's like the undoing of that might take a moment but it will happen so then you see like, oh my god the only thing that was in the way was just my idea about it or the way that I thought about it was the only thing that was in, in the way that's all and nothing else you know so so that's really good to know that's really good to know so in other words what we're doing here is a lot of cleanup in the meantime a lot of cleanup just by bursting bubbles that you focused on like oh my god that's a big bubble it's really important bubble and you see boop uh, it pops and it it is gone and it's not there anymore So talking about the love that Jesus has for you, like in my experience of myself, the love that Jesus has for you is indescribable. The love that anyone has for you, the love that you practice, that you actively give away, is always overwhelming. It's, it's never a limited form of exp yeah, expansion. So the only thing that misses when you don't experience that is you receiving it so that means like if you really want to practice love if you want if you really want to practice love it is you will dissolve in it 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 will be overwhelming to you so in this this experience is what is being offered here too like the um, you have the capability of extending love to anyone and we can practice this in class too it's like give your love away give everything away that you value and then it can return to you but you gotta give it away so that 
that is really overwhelming. So the love that Joel has for you, when you turn on a tape, when you listen to him, when you're opening up to him, the love of him is overwhelming. Same with Jesus, open up the Bible or open up A Course in Miracles, read what it says, open yourself up to receive what is given and you will be overwhelmed with love. That is what love is. So the rest that you think is love is not what love is. That is nothing to do with it. So coming back to this layer of consciousness, yeah, conceptual layer of human existence, like love is not there. Everything that you ever have called love was not what that was, was not what true love is. So this, this layer of consciousness that I bring in over and over, because it is something that you have to start to see, is like, okay, I don't have to do anything with that in true essence. I don't have to do anything with that, but looking at it and recognizing it and seeing like, okay, that's not it. That gives way to an incredible opening and, and that is uh, the offering here. So there was something else I want to share about the uh, layer of consciousness, but that will come up later for sure, because it's, it, it is continuously coming back as the thing that you can recognize for yourself. And so if you do, something else becomes possible. But if you value this, oh yeah, so maybe this is the part that I'd love to share with you too. It's like we're practicing the presence. In order to have a full-blown experience of spiritual healing, this is the time, this is the place. This is exactly when it happens, when it happens to you. So <clears throat> the, the moment of this, like the, the perfect moment now, um, is something we um, we practice, like what we did with the prayer, for instance, and having a quiet time, allowing that to to fully be in our awareness. So the moments that you that you hang out in that silence, in that stillness, in that in between, is is really your. It's, it's really like the path that you're walking on in, in spiritual healing. You know, it's exactly the path where you walk on. What I mean with that is <clears throat> one thought that come, that arises that you give uh, credit or are start to follow with your attention takes you off of that. And <clears throat> so you can see the, the present moment as the moment where you can be free of fear of um, say anger, of anxiety, of depression, of all these things that we think like, well, that's, I hope that will never happen again. Like, so to stay right here is your only chance, so to speak, is your only chance to be free of all of that. And um, yeah, that's the line, in fact, that's the narrow path that we're walking on. So one thought away from it, you, you're centrifuged into, into pain and fear and above all, time. Because time is what fear is. Time is what attack is. Time is where well, you, you can fill in the blank. You know all about time. Time is what disaster is. Time is what disease is. So coming to this present moment, you see, in fact, that it is cause and effect coming together. There's nothing that the past determines about now. There's absolutely nothing that it determines. So this moment is completely free of the past. It's completely free to be itself, to, to be your presence, your experience of yourself, no one else's. Like, this is all about you receiving that for yourself, coming to a whole experience of presence. So let's practice that a little bit, just for now. It's like, 
one question then is this it's like do you think that something from the past is determining anything that you're experiencing right now well cut it you know it's like okay i'll i'll cut these my little scissors like i cut that roots i cut them no there's nothing to do with it and this situation no nothing either so it's like you do some you do some real um pruning <laughs> that's the word <laughs> you do some serious pruning none of what came from the past has an impact on this like beautiful new present moment of yourself none of it and and this moment has also nothing to do with an projected future or anything like that has nothing to do with it so that's that's really great to remember all right so i don't want to exhaust you um but we'll continue so i'm going to play a little song to um yeah to relax and to go even deeper into your own experience and this is a spontaneous action so you can see this as some kind of um, small break so if you need to go somewhere like a bathroom or whatever this is this would be the time um, but you can stay right here so I have a song this takes about three and a half minutes so just take your time
So this, this is where we are. This is where this takes place. You know, this is ex exactly where this takes place in you. Wow, that's great. It's great to connect with. So this, you see, like n nothing is exempt from it. All is included into it. And um, this is also during your day, it's like, don't let yourself be distracted by the appearances because it appears as this it is not it is error always appears as it is not what it appears to be so there's also no need for you to connect it with a reality so and that is why there's another way of looking at everything available for you like just be patient just stay right there just come back to your presence like okay it's occurring right here in me it's not going anywhere i take this with me wherever i go i cannot lose that it cannot be taken away from me so here i am my christ mind with me like i walk around wherever i go it really doesn't matter i stay right here this is my practice i stay right in the present moment in my stillness in connecting continuously coming back to that spirit will help you to remind yourself of that it's like it but just listen and don't do anything in that sense that you're used to to connect with the world let this be a whole new experience for yourself this is in fact all the time the the invitation it's like oh here's some what appears to be a sick person oh I just got a call from an what appears to be this and that I just saw this person telling me that this and this happened somewhere like all that everything there's no there's no exception it is an appearance that you took serious for a moment you took it serious you really thought it was an actual occurrence no, it is a reflection of an occurrence that never took place. Only in your imagination, really like that. It's like it's only happening in your imagination. You take it for real, what you're perceiving. And it is a reflection, it is not a fact. So here is like, while well, the way is way open to to have a whole different experience of yourself it is so available no matter where you go with you know enough about it you have enough experience you read all the books about it you listen to every talk about it like you exactly know this now the next step it's like you hear it you you start to accept that idea now you're going to come into the demonstration of it it's like 
I might as well just practice and apply what I've learned. Here it is. Okay, I yeah, walk this earth as the light of the world. I'm extending this light to everyone. What does that mean? It is not something that I sell or do or whatever. No, it's just me not confirming anything that is not the truth. Like the only thing that I'm confirming in myself is my connection with what is. That is how I enter into the world. And when I forget, that's perfectly all right. I return back and start right here over again. Okay, this is it. I stay right here. I'm not going anywhere. Nothing can pull me out of this. Temporary, it looks like that. That's fine. A mistake is, is quickly corrected when I know where to go. So in this class, you know where to go. When you've signed up for this, you know where to go for it. Otherwise, you would not do even this. So it's like, this is happening in me. Here it is. Here's my healing practice. Here's my healing center. It's right in me. God is here. Spirit is in me. I'm waiting for guidance. I'm allowing that to be my input. And whatever appears out there is not my input any longer. I set myself free of the bondage of space and time and cause and effect and dark and light and sick and well and poor and rich and all this duality that I got caught in but doesn't serve any purpose than a delay of entering deeply into my happiness and joy. So that is really different. And, and you're ready for it. It's like you're ready to practice that. Absolutely. You've heard everything. So there's no escape in that sense anymore. You cannot fool yourself any longer that you don't have the appropriate paddles to do this. You have. So now it's time to stand up and, and demonstrate that to yourself, knowing that that is your truth. You don't have to prove anything, but you demonstrate it by just applying it and doing it. Despite all appearances, there are no exceptions really. It's like there's absolutely no exception. There's no exception to the love of God. This is what you are. You cannot rewrite that. You you thought you could for a moment in your idea about yourself, but it was it didn't go anywhere. So it collapsed altogether. So that's the invitation, and that's the yeah, the the practice. So thank you so much for listening to this with me in this in this recognition of, yeah, that's the point. Yeah, exactly. This is where I recognize myself uh, in my essence. Absolutely. Um, so thank you for, for being here and doing that, joining with me in the practice of doing that. That's really great. So thank you for that. In class, we're going to continue with some sharing and some introduction to one another with the... Uh, say the assignment that I gave to, by email to the participants. Um, so I'm very curious what is there for us to enjoy and um, it has everything to do with where you find yourself right now. So who knows how beautiful the similarities will be or what new experiences will come to us. So anyway, thank you for everything and um, see you soon. So I'm closing this recording.